بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله uh, Welcome brothers and sisters again in, a, in another session or episode in the series of Aqeedah explaining the hadith of Jibreel عليه الصلاة والسلام We've reached to the uh, fifth pillar which is belief in the hereafter. And we spoke about uh, the matters or things that are included in belief in the hereafter. And we addressed some of them. And today we will resume uh, counting or enumerating more of these um, points that are included or should be included in one's faith when he believes or she believes in the hereafter. We should believe that Allah Azza wa Jal will hold people to account. Allah Azza wa Jal says in the Quran, "Kalla idha dukkat al-ard dakkan dakka, wa jaa Rabbuk wal Malak sifan sifa, wa jaa yom idin bi Jahannam, yom idin yatadkar al-insan wa anna lhu al-dhikra." يقول يا ليتني قدمت لحياتي which means no when the earth has been leveled pounded and crushed and your lord will come and the angels as well lined up in rows upon rows and hell is brought near within view on that day this is when every person will remember their sins, that is. But what is the use of remembering then? One will cry, I wish I had sent forth something good for my real life, my true life. The last point we addressed last time is that Allah Azza wa Jal will make the earth a plain level he will level it subhanahu wa ta'ala as this first verse in the set of verses I just recited. Allah Azza wa Jal will come, the angels will come and Allah will come to hold people to account, to conduct accountability to people. There will be no injustice on that day because everything is recorded, everything is preserved in a record. Allah Azza wa Jal says, وَوُضِعَ الْكِتَابُ فَتَرَ الْمُجِرِمِينَ مُشْفِقِينَ مِمَّا فِيهِ ويقولون يا ويلتنا ما لهذا الكتاب لا يغادر صغيرة ولا كبيرة إلا أحصاها ووجدوا ما عملوا حاضرا ولا يظلم ربك أحدا And the record of deeds will be placed open and you will see the criminals fearful of what's in it they will cry Oh, woo to us. What is this book that leaves nothing small or large except that it has enumerated it? And they will find whatever they did present before them. And your Lord does not do injustice to anyone. So everything we say, everything we do is recorded regardless of how insignificant we feel it is, it's still going to be there. The record is going to be very, very precise in what it has in it. It is so precise as Allah Azza wa Jal described, فَمَنْ يَعْمَلْ مِثْقَالَ ذَرَّةٍ خَيْرًا يَرَهُ وَمَنْ يَعْمَلْ مِثْقَالَ ذَرَّةٍ شَرًّا يَرَهُ Whoever does good, even the weight of a particle or an ant will see it. And whoever does evil, even the weight of a particle or an ant will see it. It is a very scary moment, very scary situation. That needs a lot of preparation. That needs seriousness from us in this life. Paving our way to Jannah when we go to that gathering before Allah. 
That's why it is so important, it is so scary to the extent that Umar radiallahu anhu used to advise people around him and say, O oh people, hold yourselves to account before you are held to account and reckoned. And weigh yourselves before you get weighed for this, meaning weighing yourself and holding yourself to account. Now will make your reckoning and accountability on the day of judgment much easier. Then Allah Azza wa Jal will present the deeds of his slaves before them and will hold some people to account. In the book of Al-Bukhari and Muslim, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, whoever is taken to account and reckoned will surely be punished. So Aisha radiallahu anha asked, O Messenger of Allah, did Allah not say about the people who will take their books in the right hand. We ask Allah to make us amongst them. Allahumma ameen. Did he not say, فَسَوْفَ يُحَاسَبُ حِسَابًا يَسِيرًا He will have an easy reckoning. He sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Oh, this is only presenting the deeds to the slave. However, whoever is reckoned will certainly be punished. Then the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam described, and this is also in Al-Bukhari and Muslim, described how this presenting of the deeds will be to the believers. He said, Alayhi Salatu Wasallam, Allah will bring the believer close and put his veil over him. To cover him so that people don't see him and his deeds are disclosed in front of them and will say, do you recognize this sin? Do you recognize such and such sin? Do you recognize such and such sin? And Allah Azza wa Jal will present his sins to him, to him gently and softly. And the slave will say, Yes, my Lord, I do. Until Allah Azza wa Jal makes him confess and admit to all the sins that are recorded. And the man or that woman, that believer, male or female, will feel that he is certainly destroyed. He will certainly be thrown into the fire of hell. Then Allah Azza wa Jal will say to him, I concealed it. In the worldly life, meaning I did not expose you in front of people. And I will forgive it for you today. And then he is given his record. And in another narration by Ibn Majah, he said he's given his record in his right hand. Then he said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, but as for the disbelievers and the hypocrites, then they will be called upon in front of all creation. And then he recited sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the saying of Allah, هَؤُلَاءِ الَّذِينَ كَذَبُوا عَلَىٰ رَبِّهِمْ أَلَىٰ لَعْنَةُ اللَّهِ عَلَىٰ الظَّالِمِينَ These are those who lied against their Lord. Surely Allah's curse is upon the wrongdoers. This is how people will be divided with regards to accountability and uh, how, they will be, how they will be dealt with with regards to the book of deeds, the record of deeds on that day. Another matter that we need to believe in or that is included in the belief in the hereafter is that on that day, the records will be spread and each will be handed his book according to his deeds. Some people will take it with the right hands as in the narration we just uh, cited now. And Allah Azza wa Jal says about them, فَأَمَّا مَنْ أُوْتِيَ كِتَابَهُ بِأَمِينِهِ فَسَوْفَ يُحَاسَبُ حِسَابًا يَسِيرًا We ask Allah to make us amongst them. As for he who is given his record in his right hand, he will be judged with an easy account. 
Some people will take their records with the left hand. Allah Azza wa Jal says, وَأَمَّا مَنْ أُوْتِيَ كِتَابَهُ بِشِمَالِهِ فَيَقُولُ يَا لَيْتَنِي لَمْ أُوْتَ كِتَابِيَا as, as for those given their records in their left hand, they will cry bitterly. I wish I had not been given my record. And to further humiliate those people, Allah Azza wa Jal will give them their book in their left hand from behind their back. So that they are humbled and hum humbled and humiliated even more. Allah Azza wa Jal says, وَأَمَّا مَنْ أُوْتِيَ كِتَابَهُ وَرَاءَ ظَهْرِهِ فَسَوْفَ يَدْعُو ثُبُورًا وَيَصْلَى سَعِيرًا إِنَّهُ كَانَ فِي أَهْلِهِ مَسْرُورًا إِنَّهُ ظَنَّ أَلَّيْ يَحُورًا But as for those or the one who is given his record behind his back, he will cry out for discretion. We ask Allah's protection. He will cry out for destruction and will burn in a blazing fire. Indeed, he had once been among his people in happiness, and indeed, he thought he would not return ever return to his Lord. Shaykh al-Uthaymeen, may Allah have mercy on him, said, commenting on these verses, just as the disbeliever left and shunned the book of Allah and abandoned it and left it behind his back, he will be given his book of deeds, his record of deeds, from behind his back. Another aspect of faith pertaining to believing in the hereafter is that we believe that the deeds of the slave will be counted and weighed. Allah Azza wa Jal says, وَنَضَعُ الْمَوَازِينَ الْقِسْطَ لِيَوْمِ الْقِيَامَةِ فَلَا تُظْلَمُ نَفْسٌ شَيْئًا وَإِنْ كَانَ مِثْقَالَ حَبَّةٍ مِنْ خَرْدَلٍ أَتَيْنَا بِهَا وَكَفَى بِنَا حَاسِبِينَ We will set up the scales of justice on the day of judgment so no soul will be wronged in the least. And even if the deed is the weight of a mustard seed, i.e. anything as small or insignificant, as a mustard seed. We will bring it forth and sufficient are we as reckoners. So those whose deeds of whose, uh, whose scale or part of the scale of good deeds overweigh the bad deeds will be saved. As Allah Azza wa Jal says, فَأَمَّا مَنْ ثَقُلَتْ مَوَازِينُهُ فَهُوَ فِي عِيشَةِ الرَّاضِيَةِ so as for those whose scale is heavy with good deeds, he will be in a pleasant life. Otherwise, it's punishment. But as for those whose scale is light, will be thrown in a pit of hellfire. We ask Allah's protection against all of this. Now, one might ask, why should all of this take place? Allah Azza wa knows and everything is recorded. And we could have been just uh, told, you go this way and you go that way. Well, Allah Azza wa is the most just. And in order to establish evidence against his slaves, he will present everything before them in deeds in the record, and then on the scale, and there is no excuse for anyone. And then people know that they're deserving of the punishment, and no one feels that there, was any, that there is any injustice uh, practiced against them. 
The Prophet وسلم, guided us to many deeds that will result in our good deeds to become heavy on the scale. Amongst that is the narration that is in the Bukhari and Muslim. He sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, there are two terms that are very light on the tongue, meaning they're very easy to utter, very heavy on the scale, and they are dear to the most merciful. They are dear to the most merciful, light, meaning easy on the tongue, and very heavy on the scale. What are these? Subhanallah wa bihamdi, Subhanallah al azim These two terms, Subhanallah wa bihamdi, Subhanallah al azim The next point is as sirat as sirat is a bridge that lies over Jahannam. It is thinner than a hair and sharper than a sword. The believers will pass over it to reach to Jannah, each according to their deeds. But this is only for the believers. The disbelievers will not reach this stage because they will be thrown in fire immediately after reckoning. The Prophet وسلم, described this bridge, as Sirat, saying, it's a place that's very slippery for the foot. It's a very slippery bridge. The believers will pass over it according to their deeds. He said, some will pass as fast as a blink of an eye. Some will pass as fast as lightning. Some will pass as fast as a blowing wind. Some will pass as the speed of a bird flying. And some will pass as a horse that's running fast. Now, after that, he وسلم, started categorizing people and the way they will be passing that bridge. He said, Fanajim Musallam. Some people will be saved, will pass sound, untouched, and injured, un, uh, scratched. Nothing will happen to them. And they will not be touched by the fire. As Allah Azza wa Jal says, لا يسمعون حسيسها. They will not hear the slightest of the sound of Jahannam. Because hearing the sound of Jahannam in itself is torture. It's, it's terrifying. And the reason they don't hear it, as some of the scholars said, is because they will pass very fast. Now, this category of people, let's pause here a bit. This category of people did not take this because they had vouchers or they reserved a seat or something. These people exhausted their bodies and their souls in obedience to Allah Azza wa Jal during their lives in order to become deserving of this favor from Allah Azza wa Jal. They prayed Qiyamul Layl. They fasted optional days. They strove for the sake of Allah. They worked for the deen of Allah. They adhered to the commandments of Allah. They refrained from the prohibitions of Allah. They did not indulge in backbiting, listening to music, men shaving their beards, sisters not adhering to the proper hijab, people, uh, who delay the salah and this is a very bad practice and a very dangerous practice and it's commonly done among sisters who are at home usually. She'll be cooking or cleaning or chatting or whatever and the adhan is called or in some of the, this is in Muslim countries, in 
the, the, the non-Muslim countries where the adhan is not heard, the time becomes due for salah. And she or he know that it's time. And they keep delaying it and delaying it and delaying it. And before you know it, it's almost the prayer time, the, the time for the next prayer. And they had not yet prayed. Such people are not included. They're not the type we're talking about for the first category of people. The first category of people are very punctual. They hasten, they compete in doing good deeds. And that's why they become deserving of this. The second category of people, the Prophet ﷺ said, وَمَخْدُوشٌ مُرْسَلٌ He will be injured. He will be scratched. But then eventually will be saved and pass to Jannah. We ask Allah Azza wa Jal to admit us, admit us into Jannah. <coughs> <coughs> Without prior reckoning or punishment. Allahumma ameen. The third category وَمَكْدُوسٌ فِي نَارِ جَهَنَّمِ It's a person who will be pushed into the fire of hell. Other narrations of the hadith describe this category of people with other terms. Uh, one that says that their hands and their feet will be tied together and Another narration said they will be thrown upside down, face down, feet up. And regardless of how one is thrown into hell, feet up, feet down, it's hell at the end. There is nothing pleasant about it, regardless of how you land in it. We ask Allah's protection. In another narration, there are too many narrations describing this event, the event of passing over the sirah. And this isn't reported by Muslim. He وسلم, said some people will be crawling on the sirat. And your prophet, meaning himself, وسلم, is standing on the sirat saying, Rabbi Sallim, Sallim, Rabbi Sallim, Sallim, save them, O oh my Lord, save them, O oh my Lord. And then he said, people will continue until a man comes who can't walk except crawling. Another narration in Al-Bukhari and Muslim. He sallallahu alayhi wa said, the bridge will be put or set over Jahannam and I will be the first to pass from the messengers with his nation. And no one will be able to talk that day except the messengers and the words of the messengers on that day, Allahumma sallim sallim, O oh Allah save them, O oh Allah save them. And then he said, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and Jahannam has hooks, iron hooks of fire. He said, it is like the thorns of Sa'dan. Sa'dan is an area in the kingdom of Saudi Arabia. Uh, and he's talking about a, a plant that has uh, thorns all around it from all directions. Uh, he said, have, then he addressed the companions, have you ever seen the thorn of Sa'dan? They said, yes. He said, well, it will be like that. That hook will be like that, except that no one knows the greatness of its size, except Allah. It will be snatching people according to their deeds. Some of them will be thrown in hell because of their deeds. Some of them will be scratched and then rescued. And then after they're rescued. Let's just pause, brothers and sisters. I want you to visualize this situation. Someone has passed on the bridge. He's been scratched. He's been injured. And then he passes into the, uh, to, over to the other side. And then he will say, as the Messenger said, All 
praise and thanks are due to Allah who has saved me from you addressing Jahannam after I have seen you indeed Allah has given me that which he has not given to anyone else he or she will feel that they are blessed with something that no one other than themselves have been blessed with. They will feel that they have a very lofty and high status with Allah, that they were saved after they have seen it, heard it, passed over it. We ask Allah's protection. Allahumma ameen. Shaykh al-Uthaymeen rahmatullahi alayhi says, those who are fast in this life in adhering to the commands of Allah, maintaining themselves on the sirat, the path of Allah, they will be the ones who will pass faster on the sirat on the here, in the hereafter. Those who hasten, he said, to repentance will be the ones with the lightest burden on their shoulders. You see, the sirat, the bridge, will be pitch dark. And the only way to pass is when Allah blesses people with light. And people will not be able to see anything except when Allah gives them that light. And they will be given that according to their own deeds. And this is reported by Ahmad and classified as sound by Albani. Allah Azza wa Jal will call upon people and say, raise your heads. So they will raise their heads. And then he will give them lights according to their deeds. He said, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He said, some of them will get a light as huge as a mountain, as a huge mountain that lights in front of him. And some of them will give, be given something smaller than that. And some will be given a light that is the size of a palm tree. He will hold it in his right hand. And others will be given something smaller than that. And then he said, until it, it decreases, the size decreases, he said, until a man is given a light on his toe that lights up and then dims out, goes off, and lights up and goes out, goes off, dims down and then goes off. And when it lights up, he takes a step. And when it, when it goes off, he stops until he passes. And then he said, and there will be people who will be surrounded with darkness from all directions. We ask Allah's protection. We ask Allah's admittance into, Firda, into Al-Firdaus Al-A'la without prior reckoning or punishment. And I will conclude with a, an amazing description about the horror of passing over the Sirat that was said by Al-Imam Al-Qurtubi, rahmatullahi alayhi. He said, reminding and advising, he said, just reflect and think about your situation and what will happen to your heart on that day. How terrified you will be. <coughs> he said, think how scared you will be when you see the fineness of the bridge and then when your eyes see the darkness of Jahannam under that bridge. And then when you hear its fury and roaring, and then you're commanded to pass over that bridge. Whilst you are weak, scared, your, your heart is shaken, you feel your feet slippery, your, ha your, your shoulders are overburdened with your sins, that prevent you from walking straight on a plain level, let alone walking on that fine bridge and that sharp bridge. How will you feel, he says, 
When you place one foot on that sirat and you feel how sharp it is and you become scared and start shaking and then you have to, pay to place the second one. <coughs> you have to raise the second one and place it ahead of the first one so you can go forward. And you see people in front of you falling into the fire of hell. You see these hooks of Jahannam scratching and snatching people. Why do you see them? You see them being thrown heads down into the hell, into the fire of hell. Then he said, indeed, it is a very terrifying scene and very dangerous path to go over. And then he said and concluded, وَتَزَوَّدُوا And this is the solution. وَتَزَوَّدُوا فَإِنَّ خَيْرَ الزَّادِ التَّقْوَى وَاتَّقُونِ يَا أُولِي الْأَلْبَابِ Take provision for the best of provision is taqwa, is piety, is being conscious of Allah. And fear me, O you who have sense, who have vision, who have hearts, who reflect, who ponder. We ask Allah Azza wa Jal to make us amongst them. With this, I will cl- conclude this session for tonight, and we will open the floor for questions and answers, inshallah.